Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I am hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So, uh, before we get into this video, before I, you know, you saw the title and you're probably wondering, oh wow, another winter video in the middle of summer. Guys, this is not a winter outlook. This video will, I think, be titled, Why This Upcoming Pattern Change Indicates a Possibly Cold Winter. And um, there's there's a lot of analogs that I looked through, and it's there's some surprising stuff that I want to share with you guys. It's very interesting, so don't go all, you know, this is not an outlook, this is speculation, almost for the fun of it. So don't base your pants off of this, you know, don't like, you know, say, oh, winter's cold, and, yep, 100%. No, uh, no, you know, no, no, no need for change. No, there's definitely, there's probably going to change a thousand times. But um, based on the historical analogs, we're looking at some surprising things. Also, if you'd like to support this channel, you could do so by subscribing. It's a red subscribe button. If you aren't subscribed, you click on it and you're subscribed to this channel. So that is a very helpful thing you can do if you want to support this channel. I have also two more requests. If you want to help me out um, and show appreciation to the weather community, uh, consider checking out these two channels. So basically, uh, this is uh, this is Jesse's weather channel, and uh, he shouted me out. And some of his videos, you know, aren't weather related, but they are. I, I just subscribe to him. You know. Just leave a couple of positive comments. He's going through some tough times, and uh, I really do feel sorry for him. At sometimes when people don't understand him, uh, uh, he, he just subscribe to him, please do so. Um, also, uh, there's a guy named Winter Weather Center. Um, adore this guy. I don't know why. Uh, he last video he made was six months ago, but I watched every single one of his videos, and uh, I, I really like them a lot. So, uh, you know, con consider subscribing to him. He has 10 subscribers. Let's see if we could get him up to 100. So let's uh, consider doing that. Um, so now uh, I, I, I minimize this thing for a cup. I don't know if this will screw with the whole, um, the whole, I'll actually pause this video and check in a minute. Okay, guys, so uh, I needed to pause the video to see if this didn't mess up the, um, the pixelation of the screen. So let's just get right into this. So, uh, the upcoming pattern change which I'm talking about, let's get to the first part of the title, is a chilly July, and right now we're seeing very warm temperatures, if you, this is an hour 180, but if we were to go back to say hour 60, um, there's, you know, differences, we see warm temperatures across the central US into the western US, and, <clears throat> sorry, and, it seems as if the cold is there, it's wandering, but it does not want to come down into, <clears throat> into sorry, into the central to eastern United States. It does not really want to, it's getting blocked by this high pressure, but eventually a couple of them compile on top of each other, and what they do is you can see they push through. Slowly but surely, each day they get, uh, you know, more and more south. These anomalies are fairly drastic, you can see 12 degrees below average. Um, is this, I would honestly take these below average temperatures the way more than, uh, 12 degree above average because an above average 12 degrees above average if you're seeing 90s as an average you would have 100 if you're seeing 90s and you have 12 degrees below average you're seeing 78 so uh, that is you know very very comfortable and uh, you, you know you're much more preferable but you know it's, it's definitely gonna be chilly there are gonna be days where it's warm don't get me wrong but you can see towards the end it just gets cooler and cooler and cooler and nigger and it's just gonna get very very chilly so um you know definitely um uh definitely it's it's gonna be a chilly july and many models are showing this the climate prediction center is showing this and i just wanted to prove it to you that it's gonna be a chilly july so if we look at the cfs weekly i just wanted to show you with this first part to show look cooling off and usually these models i'm telling you they are warm bias which is where they show um more warmth than there's actually going to be and when they're showing these chilly temperatures you know that something's up and you can see um they're still showing uh they're still showing more warmth because that's what they are these models are warm bias but even when they're showing a hint of blue you know that something's going on uh i, I could show you the 8 to 14 day outlook for july but it's gonna look below average and it's just the model data i've been talking about this for a week now and and it seems to be coming, you know, seems to be becoming more and more likely. So now the question is, if uh, the July is cold, what are the impacts on winter? And uh, how do I even find it? So basically, um, I went through this website. I typed in year by year from, I didn't do all, it 
too many years, but I did a back all the way to 1998. So I started 2018 and I tried uh, finding a cold July. Whenever there's a cold July, I wrote down the year. So for example, the years were 2014 had a cold July, 2013 had a cold July, and not for the Holy West, it was a cold July for the similar area where the cold will be in this July. So I tried, you know, adjusting to this year. 2014, 2013, 2009, 2004, I think, and 2000. So those, you know, all had the very similar Julys as the one we're looking at. And if we were to look at the anomalies, you could see, uh, okay, so this is what the, okay. Basically, this is what the Julys looked like. I, I should go into presentation mode um, for this. And I'll have to expand this quickly just to adjust to the new screen. And you can see this is July 2014. It's at the bottom. 2013, 2009. And look at that. A very big anomaly. This may seem very drastic. You know, this July is not going to be that cold. Well, first off, we don't know the magnitude of this July. It may be very cold. It might not be. Um, but it looks chilly. Uh, the magnitude is uncertain. But look, that's, you know, th that dark uh, purple, it's not even on here. It's only 1.5 Celsius. So that's not too much. In winter, sometimes if you look at the analogs, it goes down to negative 4. And that's that's a big difference. Negative 4 Celsius is, I don't know, 10.5 Fahrenheit, something like that. Um, that's that's a big difference. And you can see uh, 1.5 isn't terrible, uh, big, terribly big difference, it may seem. But for July, uh, you know, it's 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 definitely noticeable and you can see that it's there so uh now we go back let's go back to uh i want to uh, go back all the way to the first slide now because and those years uh this is what the winter looked like those years with that cold july this is what the winters looked like you can see december to through march um and you can see that these are different years now 2015 14 they're just basically up to one year because i needed to finish or i needed to write the year on when this uh, time period finished. So see it finished in March of the new year since the new year starts January 1st. So now it's instead of 2014, it's 2015. Instead of 2013, it's 2014. Instead of 2009, it's 2010. Instead of 2004, it's 2005. And instead of 2000, it's 2001. And you can see this is what the winter anomalies were. Um, yeah, see that what I'm talking about? This it's, it's pretty goes hand to hand. There's no... <clears throat> I did not have to like search hard at all or search anywhere i mean this was literally just the data that was given out december through march the most wintry months of winter if not the months of winter i didn't include november in because i just felt like i, I didn't i didn't even check the analog for november uh, so uh, i could have done that but december through march is usually when the snow and the cold is the most and you could see there's the anomaly. It's fairly, you know, surprising. I mean, it kind of shocked me because I didn't expect such a hand-to-hand, -hand, uh, you know, just a, a direct correlation between these two. Cold July, cold winter, possibly. And again, this is just speculation, but let's now look at the individual months. So December seemed not uh, the worst because most of the cold seemed to be still in a a southern Canada area, but still fairly chilly. You could see um, now we're back to the other years because uh, because it's December of the old year, and you could see very very chilly, but possibly in South Canada the, during these years. So December looks looked pretty chilly. January did not look too bad, but still um, below average for the east and warmer for the west. That's one thing I want to point out. Um, if you live in the northwest, in the west in general, I would say west of the Rockies which is usually classified as the western part of the United States. Uh, it looked not too terribly warm, um, but it definitely had a, 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 you know, definitely didn't have a cold winter, I would say, below average. And you look at February. February was just, holy cow, look at that. Look at those anomalies. That is cold, guys. That is cold. You can see negative 4 degrees Celsius. That is quite a bit of a difference. And you can see in the west, a little bit warmer, not too warm, uh, 2.5 degrees, which isn't too terrible. Uh, of warmth, you know, still could see plenty of snow in those areas, but these areas possibly seeing some very, very, very stunning cold conditions. Um, and this is the March 2015, 2014, 2010, 2005, 2001. So you could see now this is the new year because it's March, and look at that, uh, just I mean, shocking. I mean, it's it varies, it varies a little bit. You can see here, uh, it was very cold in Canada. This area now we're looking at warmer conditions here across Canada. So, uh, and warmer across the west, but still chilly across the 
on ETH. So this is, I was shocked to find this, guys. I was, I did not honestly expect to see this uh, variation because I just start. I didn't even, I wasn't even planning to make a video on it. I was just uh, curious myself as to, you know, as to if, you know, we're going to see a cold July. Does it have any very, you know, any relationship to uh, the a cold winter? And this is what I found. So am I saying there's going to be a cold winter? Not really. Um, am I, you know, I'm not guaranteeing that. Am I, you know, are the analogs showing that? Yes, they are. And uh, analogs is only one portion of the forecast and should only be taken as one portion of the forecast, not uh, a whole cumulative, you know, forecast based on analogs. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, consider to this, uh, subscribing to this channel. Consider subscribing to Jesse's Weather Channel and Winter Weather Center. So uh, thank you for... Uh, for doing so, and I will catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.